Hi, uh, video 55 is going to show you how you can access data that's uh, been hoovered up as part of a data collection exercise into uh, an FGK Imager AD1 image that you need to access using your normal X-Ways Forensics workflow. Uh, I hear a lot of stories about people who have either created or received AD1 images and they need to access the data using X-Ways Forensics because that's the, the, perhaps their preferred tool and if you're watching this then that's probably the case as well. So I've already created uh, an AD1 image using FGK Imager uh, which of course is free which is why a lot of people use it but the, the AD1 image format uh, I find not to be quite so good when you're dealing with large volumes of data but it works fine for, for small amounts. So um, here is my AD1 image with stuff in it um, so it definitely works as you can see so if I just remove that for a moment what you can do using FTK Imager is use its uh, image mounting tool which because FTK Imager is free it avoids the need for you to buy any commercial tool to mount the AD1 image um, well why, why do we even want to mount the image in the first place well my point is that you can then access the logical volume using x -ways Forensics um, without the need to extract the files in the first place. Um, and this is part of the point, when you have to extract files from an AD1 in order to rewrap it into some new, new format, you've got an additional step to try and explain. Um, uh, not to mention the fact that you're at the mercy of your operating system as soon as you extract those files out. So in this case, uh, I can access my AD1 so I've chosen that as the thing I want to mount. I've specifically said that it's a read-only uh, mount. So if I now mount it, it's now mounted. And if I go to Windows Explorer, you can see it's now in there. In, so I can browse and explore the files in just the same way in a read-only mode. But of course, going forward, that doesn't help you with your x Forensics workflow. You don't want to have to do this every time. So if we now go to x -ray Forensics, while that image is still mounted in the background, um, I've just quickly uh, created a new case. If I add the image, um, sorry, not an image. If I add a medium, it will list my logical volumes of which one of them is this mounted AD1 image. Obviously there isn't a physical device to mount because it's not a physically attached drive. So I click OK to that and x Forensics will automatically work out what file system is going on. And here you have access to the data within that mounted uh, volume. Uh, so um, as you can see. Uh, so the next step, the third step, is to create a new evidence container using the x Forensics format from that read-only mounted AD1. So we go to Specialist, Evidence File Container, New. Choose a place where you want to save your new image. Uh, I'm in a virtual machine, so I'm somewhat restricted as where I can send it. But I'm going to call it uh, XYZ Forensics AD1 to CTR. I can add in here metadata, as of course you can whenever you create an evidence container in XYZ. So um, uh, CTR from mounted. AD1 image. Uh, I can choose a hash algorithm of my choice, of which there's lots with X-Ways Forensics. In this particular scenario, you might want to choose the same hash algorithms as computed by FTK Imager uh, for consistency, because in the future you might need to provide both the original AD1 and the CTR to somebody. Um, but you could, if you wanted to, choose SHA-256, for example. But I'm going to stick with MD5 and click OK to that. So it's now ready to receive new data. So now if I just go right to the top of my mounted volume, right click, explore recursively, here's all the data that's in the AD1. I control A to select all, right click and add to x Forensics container. You can change those options if you want, but most of the time the defaults will suffice. So now it's adding those files from the read-only mounted AD1. So there are no extractions going on here. So we click OK to that, and now we uh, close the container. So it's now closed. So now if I remove this volume from my x Forensics case, 
and dismount the mounted AD1 and close FTK Imager. So now nothing's mounted, nothing's open, blah, blah, blah. So you could be someone on the other side of the world and you go add image and you navigate to your wherever your CTR image is, which in this case is in here. So here it is. And just to show you, there's the AD1, but this is the CTR that we want. We click OK to that. And all the data is there in just the same way without any exporting going on. Um, so that's quite useful. So it's all good. Um, so then now it's part of your workflow's workflow. Um, so just to recap then, you've got an AD1 or you've created an AD1 using FTK Imager. It's got stuff in it that you need to access with x -Face Forensics. Uh, but you don't want to have to buy a commercial mounting tool and you don't want to have to extract the files. So you, um, once you've got your AD1, the first step is to mount it in FTK Imager and then within X-Ways, while that's still mounted, you create a new evidence container, you add the mounted volume as a read-only file system and then you select all the files that were within it or whichever ones you need and you add it to a new evidence container and then from there on in you can just use the evidence container uh, as often as you need. Very useful. Good tip I think.